<clears throat> so you said to me when I asked you to complete the feedback form, the following, and thank you very much for completing it. It's not about me. It's about how I support you most of the time. So some of the question, I just put them there for the sake of putting them. I'm joking, not for the sake of, but I just also want to know how I'm doing so that I can improve as well as you know, as a tutor for the next group coming. Um, and that's the only way I can learn that there is something that I am doing wrong. So if I look at the, are you seeing my screen right now? Do you see the graphs in front of me? Can make yes. It yes, I'm okay. Let's, let's make it bigger. So overall, I am linked to 200 students on my UNISA on, and on WhatsApp, I am, I have 76 people who joined the WhatsApp group with an exception of one person that I removed yesterday for posting the same thing every, every time that I keep on telling them not to and I post I send them messages privately to say, please remove, then they don't remove it. So I removed that person because I don't want that kind of activity on the WhatsApp group as well. It derailed the purpose of the WhatsApp group. So on there, I have 76 participants. But if I compare it to what's happening online, every week online, I only have six students or less. Or more or less. So I'm, I'm glad that there are actually 13 people who responded to the questionnaire. And before I reposted it on WhatsApp, there were only six people. So I assume that those six people who posted there, they were those who attend the sessions. And what surprises me is not, not that the majority of you are, who are here are doing it for the second or for the first time is how many people have attended the session? So the red and the orange, it shows that the majority of people at least met me online, not fa uh, physically, facially or anything, but met my voice online and they were able to use the material. If I look at the, how many number of people who said they use the videos, it makes me happy to know that people are watching them to study to help them study but i'm also still worried about those three who don't know how to access them and that's the why i also want to to show you how to get there to see the um the uh the videos because what other way we can um assist if we cannot type on my unisa or on whatsapp is for you to go and rewatch the videos. And the other thing, not that this looks good, but um, what gives me pleasure is that you're saying I know the content, uh, with the exception of one who says not sure, but I'm assuming that person never attended many of my tutorials. But that does not mean I must just break. It means it tells me since there are at least two people who still believe that I'm lagging behind. It means I need to do more. Uh, I need to do more to assist students so to understand the content in order to support you. Because if I don't know the content, if I don't know how to answer your questions, or I can't help you answer your uh, the questions, then I'm doing injustice to you. So I'm I'm happy with that one. And here is the challenge. Hmm. There are people who still believe that I, the Twitter delivery of the content or the presentation made it easy to understand. So three, three people, or oh, let's say two people, two and three, like those who answered two and three, because two, I think it was do not agree or disagreeing, and then this was neutral. Therefore, it means I still have a lot to do because if two people still feel that 
the presentation was not made, didn't make them easy to understand the content, then it means I must find other mechanism or other ways of making sure that the material we share with you are easy enough for you to be able to understand the content so that you can work through the content on your own. Because UNISA is an ODL. You will never find someone standing in front of you teaching you like a contact and session. So it means the material we give you needs to be easy, understandable. But also, it cannot just be the material we give you. It means your participation as well. Because how will I know if the material is helping or not if you don't talk to me? If you don't say, I, I don't understand your slide, can you please repeat it? Or can you give me an, another example to make sure that I understand what you are saying? You're not saying me, you're not telling me all those things. So I don't know. I can only know now that people are finding it difficult. So it means next semester, I must find another way, not do the same thing. And you will notice as well if, um, oh, maybe I didn't share with you my private site. I do have a private site where I store all historical material that I have been using. So you will see that there is a transformation in terms of how I present the material based on the feedback that I, I still get from students. So I am very, very pleased with your responses as well. It, I can only improve from here on. Um, interaction. OK, so I don't have to say much about this because every week I ask and I beg and I plead, but you still don't want to talk to me. So. Um, I was hoping I will find some people who say um, I don't encourage that. Then it would have meant uh, that maybe I'm not listening enough to to you guys. So, but I'm there's nothing for me to comment more about. And in terms of the enthusiasm, huh, that this one person, I'm I'm going to assume that that one person maybe attended once my session or never attended my session and how do I move that person how do I, I need to find ways of making sure that this person does not feel like I am not interested in their studies I'm not interested in helping them because I am more than interested in making sure that you guys pass and not just pass and get 50 percent pass and get like 70, 80, 100% if possible as well. So I am here for you, not the other way around. You're not here because you're not here for me. I am here for you. So my job is to make sure that you understand your material. So I am still very worried about that one person. Now, when it comes to the revision, and here is where I am going to uh, it's going. This is going to help me in terms of the type of assessments that I post on my UNISA in order to support you, in order to give you more practice time. Uh, so I can see that you say, in terms of this, what I'm looking at, the majority of you say study unit one and study unit two and study unit three is not that difficult. Actually, and study unit four, that's what you are telling me. You're saying to me, those questions are not that difficult. So we do not have to spend more time looking at, at them, at those questions, because it's, the, the content is not that difficult. The only problem comes when we go on into study unit five. As you can see, the graph changes. It shows you that the orange, the more the orange, the more the difficult, because that's what we said. We said difficult is orange. So you will see that the blue becomes lower, 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 and the, the red increases. But from study unit five, I can clearly see that the majority of you are saying or are telling me that you struggling with study unit five until study unit 11. So it meant every week, the assessment will have more questions based on those study units. So st from study unit five until study unit, study unit 11. The other thing I need to also mention is your lecture is going to also give you an online assessment for study unit 11 only. So 
because you didn't write the exam based on that study unit. So you just go into create a couple of assessments that you can do quick, quick, and see if you, you understand the study unit. But we already did it together. So it's not going to be that difficult because you're just going to apply the same concepts that we used in one of the sessions to answer that study unit online assessment from your lecturer. But I will also include some of the units in the assessment that I'm giving you on a weekly basis. And remember, it's only going to be very small. We're only going to do close to about 10 questions or 20 questions. I think 20, 15 questions should be enough. 10 to 15 questions should be enough every week based on all the study units that you said you're having difficulties with, as you can see. Then the rest, I don't have to even say uh, more about them because I asked you which component of your module you found more difficult. And I can see that it's hypothesis, 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 and discrete. So it still shows the same thing as what you said on the graph. So I thought maybe you will say how to calculate something. And I appreciate the person who said self-discipline is their biggest problem. It's not even about the content that is the problem. It's about your time management. How do you make sure that you are able to do your assessments? Because these assessments, they are only going to benefit you when you go write the exam. Because the more you practice on them, the more you will feel comfortable when you write your exam. And that's that's it. So the others, these are the things that the plus it means what worked, uh, what you enjoyed. Um, I will read that. Uh, what I would like to concentrate more on as myself is to go back and look at the delta because the deck test tells me what can I do to improve the tutorials. So everybody says my Unita platform sucks. So that person says that. So there's nothing I can do about it because that is the UNISA platform that we are using for delivering tutorials. And like this one, Twitter is too fast for beginners. So I speak fast and I keep on telling you, if I am too fast for you, please let me know so I can slow down. But you're not talking to me. You're not telling me that. I need to know that I am moving too fast for you so that I can pace myself. But the other thing you must also remember is we uh, we have different uh, uh, different people that we, we are a diverse people in the tutorial group. There are those who come with the maths, uh, the math skill, those who understand maths. And then we have those who never even did maths at high school or even ever. Uh, primary, they did math in primary probably, but it's not as intense as what we're doing right now. Uh, so we're different. And when I give the, what do you call, the session plan, I am giving it well in advance in order for you to pace yourself so that you know that this week we're doing this, this week we're doing that, and you can go and revise those topics as well. But sometimes people don't understand at the first glance. I also gave you the WhatsApp uh, channel to say you can communicate with me there. If I was too fast in class, use the WhatsApp to say, oh, but lazy Elizabeth, I struggled in class. I didn't understand anything you said. Can you repeat this and this and this for us? I, I, I don't mind doing that. But I cannot just go ahead and do things. It's time consuming if I don't know if it's going to benefit you. But you need to talk to me. So um, those, these are very valuable insights that you are giving me that I'm going to take back and relook at them. And thank you very much for completing this. Like I said, this is not about bragging or making me look good. If that doesn't benefit me at all, I can only improve um, from honest feedback. And I can see that the majority of you do give an honest feedback. 
and going once, going twice, going three times, I am done with this. So, but you can keep on completing the feedback form if you haven't done so. Um, but at least it gave me some feedback. And I like this because then now I know where I need to put more effort in. And I can see that the majority of you are saying hypothesis testing is the most difficult concept. So it means sometimes, somewhere, I will just have to do the hypothesis questions and then we can have a session on Saturday or on Friday where we discuss only hypothesis testing. Okay, so with that, I can just uh, stop this sharing and then see if I can log in onto my UNISA again because the activity for today is on my UNISA. Unfortunately, I cannot log in onto my UNISA. It is refusing me to log in. And since I am not a student, it's not going to allow me to request a password. Huh. I don't know, maybe, can can someone from your side try and log in onto my UNISA and see if it works? Can you please try for me? Because all the work that we need to be doing is on my UNISA. Yeah, I tried from my side, I was able to, I was able to log on. So, I'm also able to log on. You are able to log on. I um, need to get to the home page, to the login page. Hey. <laughs> okay. So from my side, it keeps on. It's refusing. My password. Then I, let me try for the last time. Mm -mm. So I think maybe they log me out. They don't want me to work on my units. Um, Is it wanting to reset the password? But I cannot reset my password since I am as, uh, I'm logged in as a staff member. Um, let's see if I do. Sure. Then how am I going to to see your answers? Lizzie. Hello, Lizzie. You don't Hello. have even an you don't have even an external device that maybe you can retrieve the question paper from. Uh, uh, maybe we can do we can uh, do them uh, from that external. Hey, that's the thing. I I don't know which exam paper I used, unless okay. if. Unless if someone wants to share their screen with us, uh, who wants to share? <laughs> who wants to share their answers with us? Don't worry, it's not going. We're not going to judge. We're not going to judge you. Uh, not. Uh, colleague, do you want to do? Do you want to try it and share your? Screen? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't allow us to share from outside. No, I can give you permission to share, to be a presenter as well. Uh, the answers we don't get as well. 
No, I just want you to share the, the question. Oh. Like, as, as if like you're going through the question. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to make you a presenter. Ah, you are now a presenter. See if you are able to share. Uh, oh, there we go. I will try and start but it's the weekend, so H, I don't know. So it's not, normally it has a block around it when you're sharing. Uh, and this one doesn't have it. So nobody should be able to, see, can you, you, none of you can see my screen, huh? No, we can't see it, not yet. Not yet. Let me try to share again. No, it doesn't look like it's picking up my screen. It's it's it indicates that it's sharing, but it doesn't have that red block around it that actually shows that it's being shared. Okay. But let's see. Um, alternatively, what I can do is find a new exam paper because Lizzie, I um I saved all the questions individually as um attachments. If I upload them in the chat, will you be able to use those? Yes, let's do that. Okay. Uh, but you are sharing there. Who's sharing now? That's Coleka. Is that you, Coleka? Oh, is that me? We see the Google with the purple thingy. Okay. Yeah, purple roses. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so is it showing begin assessment? No. No. We we see in your Google thing. You shared the. Did you share your screen or you shared the 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 Google? Let me see. Ah, oh, okay. So let me close that one. Otherwise, in the meantime, while she's still trying to sort that one out, um, you can post them on the questions. You, you can put them on the chat. I'm trying to upload them. Sorry, I out. Oh, right. Okay, you have to do that. So, is somebody else sharing? Nope. I'm uploading them as um, JPEG images. Yes. Just in case. Colega. Yes. It doesn't want you to share with us. Uh, it mm. should be sharing now. So I put it on sharing. Uh, nobody can see the assessment on on their side. It's not sharing. It's not sharing. Mm -hmm. Is it possible maybe to do a screenshot, then you send it to Lizzie, then we can do it from maybe question by question, 
I should in this bunch of Would that not yes. take longer? Uh sorry. Yeah, now can you see? Now we are coming right. Is it still your uh, colleague? Uh, yes, it is. There we go. Thank you very much. Yes. But that's study unit five. No, we want yes. to go back to the online assessment. It's under the online assessment. OK, yeah, wait, 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 wait. While you're still there. So some people say they don't know where the recordings are. If you go to the online tutorial, you can point there. Um, oh. Koleka, you can be my my uh, co-host. So show them where the online tutorials are. And you need to scroll down a little bit. Okay, so all the sessions, when they are recorded, they will be kept in this. So for all the recorded sessions for content, they are under the recorded sessions there. If you click on the link that says recorded sessions, uh, you have all the sessions here and you can expand on any of them. The recordings are in the, I just minimized them for ease of reference so that you can just go to each one of them. So like on the 19th, there is the recording and you will notice some of them have multiple recordings within it because I just split the sessions in smaller components so that you don't spend one hour looking at the same thing so that if you just want to look at hypothesis for the proportion, you only look at that. If you want to look at this, you just look at that. Okay, so that's where the online assessments are. For all the exam preparation sessions, if you go up and go back to the online, online tutorials, if you click back there on the site where it says online tutorials, and you go to exam preparations and that will be all the recordings for the exam prep so last week we had one there are the um the recordings for last week for friday i think or saturday session um i've kept them there so i will also put for today's session we will have it there as well um okay so let's go to the online Assessment. So if you click on online assessment, uh, colleague, click on online yes. assessment. There's online assessment today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the and only one this, that's available there. Yes. So uh this are your this is your individual score it's fine but let's go to the uh, wait oh that's the other thing because you only have i've closed it so you won't be able to see it as well so pity uh carol uh who's the other person uh was it maurice maurice Yes, Lizzie, what I did, it doesn't want to send the files in the chat. So what I did was okay. I, I know you don't yeah. look at WhatsApp during um, your online sessions, but I did send them in an online, I sent them to you via WhatsApp. If you want yes. to share your screen from WhatsApp. Oh, okay. So or upload them from WhatsApp. So I uploaded then, them all into WhatsApp. Yeah, I see that. Sorry, it doesn't uh, want uh, to, it doesn't want to upload uh, the files in uh, the chat yeah oh, okay so the other problem i have is my whatsapp doesn't download sorry lizzie um <laughs> are you referring to the online assessment for study unit one to five one to six the yes. online practice assessment it's still yes. showing on my side um i can try and see if i can go into it then maybe i can share my screen Okay, uh, who is you now? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, uh, Antoline. Antoline. Yes. 
Let me it's showing yeah. I like haven't done it, it, so that's why it's still showing. Okay, colleague, colleague, please you can stop sharing and then I'm going to make yes, I have. Uh, the presenter. Uh, okay. When do we do that now? Hey, sorry about this. I didn't heard of we will have technical issues today, but it's one of those learning experiences. Um, if I can find your name now, Antoline. Oh, there we go. Make presenter. So, so if I can ask. Are you going to be able to open up the assessment so we can redo the, the, the yes, yes. assessment one to four? Yes. Study I'll units one to four. Open. Yes, I will leave them open and then this week I will open up the study unit. There we go. Thank you very much. And then this yeah. week I will also open study unit seven to 11. Uh, and then I will not put the closing date on it. So that is just open. Okay, so. You said to me in the assessment, in the feedback, to say study unit one till study unit four, you find it easy. So this question should be easy. Did you find the answer for this question? Um, um, Antolin, then it means you will have to select the answers as well as we go along. So let's do this. Let's see if we are able to answer the questions. Were you able to answer? Or if you were not able to answer now, look at the question and select the correct, or which one of the following is not a categorical uh, variable or question. Uh. I'm sorry, I haven't really, I'm, I've just started joining the online tutorial, so I'm still getting appointed with all the study units. I just thought, let me help and share the screen. So no, it's if fine. you guys want to work saying, through it, it's fine. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm not saying you answer the question. This is, this okay, is thank you. for the whole group. You are just there to tick when they give an answer. <laughs> thank when you. When they give an answer, we tick. So guys, let's have the discussion. I've been talking for almost, I don't know how many weeks now. Now it's your turn to talk. Uh, Between B and C? Number three. Uh, number three says height of the person. And, and someone says name of internet provider. Between us. B and C. That's what I heard. So a name of internet provider, like internet provider might be MWeb, might be AfriHost, might be... Mm, see. Yes. So the question was, which one is not a categorical? Remember, a categorical variable is those variables that you can put into categories. So the correct answer here should be... C. 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 Uh, Antoline, C is the answer, yes. And then press next. Okay. The following information is collected from an, is the session recorded? Oh yes, it is. The following information is collected from an application from a car loan to a certain bank. Which variables below are quantitative? Quantitative are those variables that you can measure or count. So this question, you have to select two or multiple, or it's not a single select. Which one is quantitative? B and C. And okay, the first one is B. B. And C. And C. Yes. 
which of the following is not a goal of a descriptive statistic? You remember what descriptive statistic is? Descriptive statistic is used to summarize data in tables or charts, or organize data in tables or charts. Uh, I'm guessing C. Number C. Which one is not a goal for descriptive statistic? C. Remember, there are two branches. There is inferential statistic and there is descriptive statistic. So you say uh, Marisa. Marisa. Your name is Marisa, or what is the other name? <laughs> uh, Clea. Clea. Yes, sir. I, I think I will stick with Morisa. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so you saying the answer for this question will be D. 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 Yes. Estimate estimating the characteristics of a population because that is yes. the inferential statistics property. With inferential statistics, we infer or estimate the population parameter based on the statistic or the sample uh, statistic. Okay. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? <coughs> so you'll have to go through this. This is summarizing is chapter three. Summarizing of numerical data. <clears throat> and here, actually, we're looking at a histogram, more specifically. C. Yes, C. 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 Uh, C says, if a histogram has a long tail to the left, it is positively skewed. A long tail to the left tells you it's negatively skewed, right? Skewed. Because when the tail so is to the left, is it's negative. negative. When the tail is to the right, it's positive. It's positive. Yes. So C is the incorrect, incorrect one. One. Okay, I can see why you told me that that unit one, two, three are very easy. So you are flying on this one. At, at least if you are going to, you are going to put uh, maybe ten questions for from home. <laughs> 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 from uh, starting unit one up until six. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Uh, which of the following statement is not true about the mean? So here we still also with study uh, study unit three. Which one of the following statement is not true about the mean? So what is the mean when if I if we remind ourselves about the mean? The mean is the average. The mean is influenced by outliers. The mean means the sum of all the values divided by how many they are. Um, what else? The mean uh, with the median can tell you also the distribution. And when the mean and the median are the same, we say the distribution is symmetric. When the mean is less, uh, is Bigger than the median, we say the distribution is less skewed. When the mean is smaller than the median, we say the distribution is um, skewed positively as well. Okay, so up to what I've just said, which one did I not mention? Which See? of the following statement is not true about the mean? See. Is C because we know that the mean is always influenced by the outliers or extreme 
values. And remember, the extreme values or outliers are the values that are far away from the rest of the other values. Yes, C is the correct answer. Now we come to the calculations here. Yeah, you cannot just tell me that that is the answer. So you will have to go and calculate this. So we are now in still study unit three. Here is the measure of coefficient of variation. Remember uh, how we use the calculator. So I am going to open up the calculator now. Well, I'm. So if you have a calculator, remember the steps of using your calculator? Do you still remember them? Yes. Yes, so use those steps to calculate the answer there. If you haven't done that, Just want to open up my calculator and also Okay, so let me do this. Did you write the values down? Um, can I ask uh, who's sharing, Quinch? Who is sharing? Who's sharing? Oh, Anthony. I am sharing, yes. Yes, so you're going to call out the values for me when I do the exercise. I'm going to stop sharing your site uh, uh, and share okay. my screen from my side so that I can show you the steps. Just want to share my screen. So do you see both my calculators? Everybody? Yes. Yes. OK. So I'll start with the case show because my shop, when I click on it, it will hide my, my, my case show calculator. So you have the data in front of you. The first step that you need to do is to put your calculator to state mode. So on the case your one, on my one, the state is under number three. On your one, you will follow what your steps are. And because we're doing only one variable, so I'll choose number one. And you can call out the values for me. Okay, it is 26.5. Twenty six point five, twenty three point five, twenty nine point seven, twenty 20.4.3. 
And the last one is 28.2. So once you have stored your, cal your, your values onto your calculator, then you can press the AC button and go shift and go find the STA button. So it's on button number one. And I am looking for the bar, which is number four. So I'll just press four. And since I am doing the coefficient of variation, remember it is CV is equals to your S divided by your X bar. My X, my S will be my SX, which is four. I'm just going to press four and I'm going to divide by, and I go back again, shift one, four for VAR, and I will press two for the X bar. And there is my formula for the coefficient of variation. And I just press equal <clears throat> and multiply by 100. And the answer I get is 10.78, uh, 79. So you just need to look at the answer if you get the same answer as my one. Okay, so that is the case you want. Let's do the sharp uh, one. My sharp calculator works different to the other sharp calculators where you have all the values written in green in front of you there. But the steps are almost the same. So we need to take our calculator to state mode on this one. State mode is on number one. And we are interested in SD0. So we press SD0. And on this one, the SD0 gives me a table. But on the other calculator, you go, remember, after it goes to state mode, you press the value and then you press the M plus. And then the value M plus, the value M plus. And those who are using the financial calculator, you will press the value and press the ENT button. Value ENT button. Value ENT until you get all of them. So please call out the values. Okay, it's 26.5. 26.5. Sorry, 26. 26.5. 23.5. 29.7. 24.8. 21.1. 24. 24.3. 23.4. 22.7. 27.2. 27.2. 27.7. 23.7. 24.1, and 28.2. Okay, also, once you are done, you can just press the on and off button because everything is done. And on this calculator, my stat is on the STAT button. There is written in green. So I'll press the alpha. Like with the sharp one, you will press the alpha and go press the values that you are looking for. So in this instance, the value for your sharp calculator for the other ones and the, and the financial calculator, uh, it will be on button number five and button number four. So for this one, it makes life easier because then I just press alpha and I press the state button and it gives me this menu. And I'm going to press zero for statistics because I need to get the statistic measures. And my mean is 24.69 and my X 
my standard deviation is 2.6. You write them down. You're going to use those values to calculate your, your, your coefficient of variation. So you will say 2.6641013 divide by 24.692377. And when multiply that by a hundred, and it should give you your answer. And if I scroll down, I can see that it does not provide me with the coefficient of variation. So I just need to calculate it manually. So you say 733 divide by 24.6923070 equals multiply that by 100 equals And, and you can see that is the same answer. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and go back to the question. Please share again. <laughs> Sorry about that. Share again. There you go. Okay, so the answer is then will be option number. E. Yes. E. E. yes. E. And we press E next. Then the next question is asking you to consider the flowing data set and they give you the data and they're asking you which one is incorrect. Remember, your quantile or the, the quartiles, you need to calculate them by first finding the position and then finding the quant uh, the quartiles. But before you do that, your data needs to be ordered. So this is your chance to order your data from lowest to highest. Yes. <clears throat> and once you have ordered your data, remember quartile one. Let's see. They are asking you about quartile one. Quartile one position, you find it by saying n plus one divided by four. Remember that. Quartile one position, you find it by saying n plus one divided by four. Quartile two position, which is the median, we find it by saying n plus one divided by two. Quartile three position, we find it by three multiply by n plus one. So three into bracket, n plus one close bracket, divide by four. So go ahead and calculate those quartiles. And the other thing they are asking you here is the mean. The mean is the sum of all the values divided by how many they are. So I can also use my clever calculator that we have here. I'm going to stop sharing your site and share the calculator again. And now I'm just only going to share this calculator. Can you all see the cup? Not this cup later. Sorry, I need to stop sharing this one. Mm. So 
baby. Oh, bro. Uh, because my calculator is quick and easy to calculate. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go back and share my screen. <clears throat> so, clear the calculator. Let's go back to normal mode. I don't know how to clear this one. So I'm going back to state mode one. Is the only this latest calculator for, of sharp way it has the state there on the top has this capability of storing the data like this. So I can see no, that I it can. didn't clear the calculator from any stored values. So I can clear them and go back. State table two function yes table function mode. Uh, Let's go to one, select two. Okay, so my values were three, 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 four, uh, because there's an echo. Uh, all I'm saying, don't go and start buying new calculators. You can use the same ones that you have uh, and use the formulas. Uh, but for the sake of the exercise, I am just going to try and... Oscar, can you please mute your microphone? It creates an echo. Thank you. Uh, four. And then six equal, seven equal, nine equal, ten equal, fourteen equal, and twenty-three equal. Are they eight or seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight. I'm missing one. That's twenty-three equal. Then I can go and do my stat, alpha stat. So I need to go off the calculator, then alpha stat. And I'm still going to go to the stat var. And these are the values that you need. Your n is eight. The mean, which is x bar, is 9.5. You can just double check with how you calculated yours. And the other thing we need is the quartiles. So this calculator can give me what my quartile one is and what my quartile two is. So this is my quartile one. You can just double check if double check if that is the correct quartiles. So we know that eight plus one equals nine divided by four is two point two five, and we just round it to two. So this calculator does not calculate it the way we want it. So the answer is four for quartile one position. Quartile one position is 2.25 and the position is 2.25. Therefore, the quartile will be four because we approximate it to, uh, to four. Then, uh, we approximate it to two, and the value that is on position two is four. Then we calculate the median. So I'm not going to rely on my calculator. So don't go and buy this calculator. It doesn't calculate it right. It uses its own formulas. So quartile two, which is eight plus one is nine divided by two. It's on position 4.5, which is quartile 2, on position 4.5. And if I count, 4.5 will be between two values. It's between 1, 2, 3, 4.5. It's between the value of 9 and 7. So we're going to take 7 and add it to 9. 
So that will be 7 plus 9 equals 16 divided by 2 equals 8. So our median is 8. Quartile 1, we found that it's 4. Our quartile 2, which is on position 4.5, is 8. And uh, did they ask about quartile 3? Wait. Well, let's just go ahead and do that, which will be yes, they did. Eight, eight plus one equals nine times three equals twenty-seven divided by four, which then quartile three is on position six point seven five. Therefore, we estimate it to be on position seven, and when we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's on fourteen. And that will be 14 will be our quartile three value. Okay, so don't use that calculator. It's teaching us the wrong things. Okay, you can share again the screen. I'm sorry about that. Let's go and answer our question. So we know our N is eight. Our sample size is eight. Our mean is 9.5. Our first quartile is on position 2.5, which is number four is the quartile value. And quartile two is on position 4.5, which is number eight because we take the average of seven and nine and quartile three is on position seven because it was on 6.75 therefore we estimate to be at position seven and it's quartile three is 40. so let's see which one of the following statement is incorrect the median is eight that's correct we calculated that. The first quarter, not the position, but the quarter is four. That is correct. We find that it's four. The third quarter, we said, is on position seven, it's 14, and that is correct. The mean is 9.5, that is correct. And the distribution is symmetric. When the distribution is symmetric, it means what? The distribution is symmetric if the mean and the median are the same. So the mean is 9.5, the median is eight. Oscar, sorry. No, I wanted to reply. I thought maybe you were asking. I was asking, I'm too fast. Like someone yeah, you said, were I'm too fast. <laughs> yes, I was I was asking a question. So I know. Sorry. Okay. I must learn to, to to wait patiently. Yes. So the distribution is symmetric when the mean and the median are the same. So in this instance, our mean is 9.5, our median is eight. So it is not symmetrical. So we almost halfway through the questions because we are on question number seven. There are 15 questions. <clears throat> now this is basic probability. So if we don't finish, we can always carry on tomorrow. Uh, we have two hours, so it means tomorrow we might have shorter time. Because uh, the session ends at half past, and then tomorrow we'll continue from question number nine until question number 15. Okay, so this is basic probabilities. If you look at this table now, you need to ask yourself what are they giving you in this table? They are giving you decimals. So you need to tell yourself if this are in decimal form, it means these are my probabilities. And it means they gave you all joint 
probabilities because they gave you all the probabilities inside the table. All what you need to do as well is look at the questions, what they are they asking? And if they are asking you for you to answer some sort of calculations, like I can see they, that they are asking like the probability of F or O uh, complement, you need to write the formula down. And if there are things that are missing from this, then you need to complete it. And those things are like the total, where you calculate the probability, the, your simple probability or your marginal probabilities. So before you start everything else, you quickly take this table, you calculate the totals. It's going to take you less than five minutes to calculate the total. So do the totals for the table, total, total for female, total for female complement, and which are the males, and then do uh, the total for 15 years and over and the complement of 15 years and over, which is the under 15, calculate that and then start answering the question. So the first question they are asking you, the probability of making a sale to a customer who is either a female or underage. So most of these questions they are asking you is the probability of um, or which is the addition rule, which is the probability of either or one of those two happening. So yeah, the, the first one, the female or under. So you're going to say, what is female? Female is F and under is O complement. What is the probability of F or O complement? That is the first question. So you can write it the same way as E. You see on E, they have that first part of the question. On E, that is the question that they're asking you at the top. The probability of F or O complement. And that is given by, so you have to write it up. You have to write the formula. So the formula will be the probability of F plus the probability of O complement minus the probability of F and O complement. So since you wrote the totals quickly there, you have total for the O complement and you have total for female, you can just use those values to calculate that probability. So the first one, probability of F or O complement is given by the probability of female, which will be the total, plus the probability of O complement, which will be the total, when you add 0 0.475 plus 0 0.112 will be the probability of O complement, minus the probability of female and O complement, which is female and O complement, which is 0, 0,112. So we're going to find 0, 0,1, 0, 0, 0,109 plus 0, 0,1, um, 0 0.109 plus 0.112. Gives me the total, which is probability of female which is 0, 0,221 plus. That's the problem with this because I cannot show you on my screen now. <coughs> you just have to listen to my voice. The probability of O complement, which is under 15 years, then it is 0, 0, uh, 0 0.475 plus 0 0.112 two equals 0 0.587 minus 0 0.112. What do you get? 0 0.221 plus 0 0.587 minus 0 0.112.
Is it 0 0.696? 0 0.696. Sorry about my silence. I am trying to see if I can do something different um, so that I can try and type when we are looking at it. <clears throat> okay, I am going to share my screen just now. I have found a better way of doing it now. So you all are able to see my screen right now? Yes, I can see. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I need to type here, total. And yeah, you must write the total. So already I have that my total, I'm not completing the whole table. Uh, where is that? So the total for female under is 0 0.587. And the, and the total for female, we found that it's 0 0.221. And I guess it's very easy to find the other total because it's 1 minus 0 0.221, which is 0. 0 0.779 on this side, and to find the other total on this side is 1 minus 0 0.587, which is 0 0.413. 0 so now, to answer number A, we are looking for the probability of female or O complement, which we can find it by saying the probability of female plus the probability of O complement, minus the probability of female and O complement. Our probability of female will be the total, which is the simple probability, which is 0 0.587. Uh, I'm writing all, all wrong. Probability of female is 0 0.21. Two two one zero comma two two one because we're looking at all female, regardless of whether they are fit, uh, fifteen years over or fifteen years under. Probability of under fifteen, regardless of whether they their gender, uh, is zero comma five eight seven minus. The joint probability of female and under, which is 0, 0,112. And this is equals to, did you calculate it? Point two two one plus point five eight seven minus point. One one two equals zero point six nine six. It's nine six. Now I forgot to copy the question. The question was looking for incorrect or correct answer. I can't even remember now. So the we know that answer. this is incorrect. Uh, then it says even F and even F complement will be described as mutually exclusive events. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes, yes they are mutually exclusive events. Uh, and then the next one, it says four mutually exclusive events. So if I look at this, and it says they are exhaustive. So this one here will be F, and O, or F complement and O, and this one is F 
and O. So these are the probabilities, F and O, F and O, and this is F complement and O complement, and this will be F and O complement. Let's look at this. All of them, if they are included in this, then it means they are exhausted. F complement and O is the first one. F and O complement is the second one. F and O complement is the third one. And F and O complement is the second one. Therefore, they are exhausted because they include all the categories of these customers. Okay, so then this is correct. The second question it was asking the probability of being male and at least 15 years. So then this day it's calculating the probability of F complement because F complement is male and the probability of being 15, at least 15 is over 15. So it is O. F complement O, we calculate it from here, which is equals to 0, 0.304. And I look at this. That is correct. The last one it says the probability of F or O complement is the same as the probability of one minus the probability of F complement and O complement. So we already calculated what this probability is because it was the first probability there. We know that the answer here should be 0, 0.696. We still need to find out if this is correct. So let's go and find out if that is correct. It says the probability of F and O. F and O is that one. So one minus 0 0.304. What is that? One minus 304. 1 minus 0 0.304 equals 0 0.696. Therefore, that is correct because then the probability of F O complement is the same as the probability of 1 minus F complement and O. That's what that says. And that's how you are going to have to find the answers in the exam. But you don't have to go through each and every one of them because I forgot what the question was asking, so I went to, through all of them. I, I could have stopped by C, but I just wanted to also demonstrate to you how to answer those other questions as well. I'm going to stop right here for today. Um, and I am going to... Tomorrow we will continue with uh, the rest of the uh, last six questions that are left. Uh, we stopped at question number eight, so it means we left with seven questions. Seven questions are still left, so we will do them tomorrow because most of those questions probably they require you to do some sort of calculation, so it might take us longer, but we might have at least an hour online trying to, to, to finish off those exercises. I will try and sort out my uh, connection issues and my, my password. And then uh, I don't think they will sort it out over the weekend. So it means I'll have to wait for Monday. Uh, I'll send the lecturer, a, uh, not the lecture, the academic facilitator, my uh, my query, and then probably by end of the day, they might resolve it. If not, I will publish the new assessment by Tuesday, and you can also take it. Then on Friday and Saturday, we will discuss it. Remember, it will be based on uh, study unit, seven until study unit 11. <clears throat> Any questions?
It is, I can just stop. It's two minutes to half past, so we are right on time. <clears throat> Nothing from me. Thank you very much. I hope this session was very valuable for you. And we will continue like this. This will be our practice and revision sessions. But you first need to go through this, um, the assessment online yourselves. And then on Friday and Saturday, at least we can find out some of the issues if you are still unsure about some of the questions. There is nothing stopping you from going back. I'm going to, as soon as I get my as, uh, um, access back, I am going to reopen the assessment for those who already submitted. You can go through it as many times as you can. These are practice exercises. So there is no harm in you going back and re-looking at the questions again and again and again. Thank you, guys. And thank you for also taking your time to complete the feedback form. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Let thank me not you. say thank a you lot so of much. things. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you so much. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye